the one and currently only real estate sector dividend king. Federal Realty Investment Trust has been giving back to investors for decades, not only in dividends, but also some very nice stock appreciation. The company is definitely facing headwinds this year in 2020 and has dropped quite significantly from their 52 week highs. Is it time to buy the dip? Stick around to find out. Hey everyone, Stock Ninja here. This is episode two of Buy the Dip. In this series, we look into companies that have seen their share price drop either recently or over the years and see what factors are driving the stock price lower, what if anything has changed fundamentally, and if now is a good time to start buying in. Today, we will do a deep dive into real estate company, Federal Realty Investment Trust. Federal Realty Investment Trust was founded in 1962 by Samuel J. Gorlitz in Washington, D.C. The company mainly operates in what they call strategically selected metropolitan markets, namely Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Miami, Chicago, Silicon Valley, and Los Angeles. Combined, they have over 100 properties with approximately 2,900 tenants, 24 million square feet, and about 2,800 residential units. Federal Realty Investment Trust is currently led by longtime CEO Donald C. Wood. Wood has been with the company since 1998 and has held a multitude of positions within the company itself, including the roles of Senior VP, CFO, Treasurer, COO, and President. Wood leads an executive leadership team of 6 members and a senior leadership team of 32 members. I read through their 2019 annual report and Wood's letter to shareholders, where he highlights some of the goals and issues the company has been running into. To summarize, he starts off the letter talking about how the retail sector has been struggling for some time now and that has hurt their overall growth figures considerably. That being said, he mentions a company is looking to invest and expand in areas where there are a lot of jobs in a few key cities around the country, while also focusing on their core business. Lastly, he mentions that the company has been strategically selling properties they deem no longer fit or beneficial to the company, and in turn acquiring new properties that they feel would be better suited for their skill set. These are all valid and interesting points, but let's keep them in mind as we break down the business further and see how 2020 has been affecting their plans and magnifying their problems. Since Wood's tenure at the head position began in 2003, Federal Realty Trust stock has appreciated approximately 167% over the last 17 years. Definitely not bad, but slightly underperforming the S&P in that time period. Wood and his team doing a decent job at keeping shareholders happy in the sense of keeping up with the benchmark S&P 500. Looking at the performance of Federal Realty over the years, we can see that the company hit an all-time high of around $171 per share in July of 2016. Since then, the stock price came down and settled largely within the $120 to $140 range before crashing during March of this year. The stock price is currently sitting 55% off of its all-time high in July of 2016 and about 46% off of its 52-week high from October of 2019. That gives us a potential upside return of 86% if the stock gets back to its 52 week high and a 125% potential return if it gets back to its all time high. So a long way to go to get back to the top it seems. If you are enjoying the content, don't forget to destroy that like button and subscribe to the channel. With the quarterly dividend distribution, Federal Realty Trust typically pays their dividend during the months of January, April, July, and October. Federal Realty Trust currently has a dividend yield of 5.72% which comes out to an annual payout of $4.24. Looking at the historical dividend yield percentage chart, we can see that FRT's yield has typically in the mid 2% to low 3% range, but has seen a drastic increase in their yield in 2020, similar to what we saw back in the great financial crisis. Lastly, the payout ratio is currently at 92.29%. Just a reminder that the payout ratio for REITs are calculated differently, using the funds from operation or FFO as opposed to the traditional EPS or earnings per share. The only company in the real estate sector holding dividend king status. Federal Realty Trust's dividend growth streak is nothing short of spectacular, with 52 years of dividend increases, and remember, the company has only been around for 58 years. That being said, the dividend growth each year has been a lot less stellar, with a 10-year compound annual growth rate or CAGR of 4.68% and the 3 and 1 year in the mid 2% range. Overall, that gives them a dividend safety score of just 60, which is considered to be borderline safe. Federal Realty's fiscal year runs from January through December each year. Their 2020 annual report has not yet been released, so we will look at their 2019 numbers and their Q2 filings from 2020 to get a rough estimate of 2020 overall. In fiscal year 2019, they generated approximately $939 million in revenue, 
which has been steadily going up the last few years, averaging about 6% growth since 2015 per year. When looking at the PE ratio for REIT, we will see that typically it's quite high, but it is better to look at the price to FFO ratio instead. When looking at the price to FFO ratio for Federal Realty Trust, it currently sits at 16.38, with an FFO of $4.60 in 2020, but analyst estimates for 2021 is $5.14, which is a 5.5% expected increase. It is good that the company is expected to recover, but the problem is they generated FFO of $6.33 in 2019 and has been in that range for a few years now. So yes, the company is likely to recover, but it's going to take a while. When looking at Federal Realty's balance sheet, we can see that total assets have been slowly inching higher. Total liabilities have also been going up, but when comparing assets to liabilities, their growth rate is about the same. Remember that all REITs need access to cheap debt to grow. That's because generally the cost of equity is higher than the cost of debt, which means that debt is a cheaper way to leverage equity capital and lower the overall cost of capital. So as with all REITs, it's important to look at the credit rating for Federal Realty, where we can see that Moody's gives them an A3 rating and S&P gives them an A- rating, both of which can be considered to be upper medium grade credit ratings and should comfort investors in the sense that they can draw down on their credit to keep the company going in case of major issues or use debt to leverage any purchases. Overall, nothing glaring or problematic with the balance sheet. I think the company is pretty secure financially. So now we have to look into how they generate their income. Federal Realty operates through just one reportable segment, which is made up of all their property income. The company focuses on owning and leasing out open-air properties located in drivable first-ring suburbs of eight major metropolitan markets. In total, they have 104 open-air properties, which is broken down into eight properties in Boston, 15 in New York, 10 in Philadelphia, 4 in Miami, 8 in Silicon Valley, 12 in Los Angeles, 4 in Chicago, and the bulk of their properties in the DC metro area with 12 in Maryland, 14 in Virginia, and 2 in DC itself. Of their tenants across all of their properties, no one tenant accounted for more than 2.6% of their annualized base rent as of December 31st, 2019. The list of tenants includes the likes of Marshalls, LA Fitness, Whole Foods, Micro Center, CVS, Aldi, and more. So definitely some big names along with some smaller companies mixed in there as well. With all of their properties, Federal Realty has been focusing on sustainable green energy and efficiency as well as ease of access for the general public. They have been steadily upgrading to LED lighting, solar, and focusing heavily on having a high walk score. So this is all well and good, but with the virus in 2020, a lot of this is irrelevant if there are not enough customers and if tenants don't pay rent. That brings us to the expiring leases by year chart where 8% of lease square footage is expiring in 2020 and 11% in 2021. In normal time, this would be a pretty good standard as most tenants tend to sign long-term leases and they can quickly find new ones given the locations. But with current circumstances, this might be a lot harder for Federal Realty Trust. Now the good news is the company is pretty focused on what they deem to be key areas. But obviously with the virus in 2020, rent collection has been rough. They recently reported in October 1st, 2020 that 94% of their resale tenants are open and operating at at least a modified basis. The company has collected 83% of their billed recurring rents and have a deferral agreement for 30 million billed recurring rents related to second and third quarter of 2020. This is a market improvement overall where they only had about 47% of tenants open in May and were collecting around 66% of recurring rent at that time. The company is recovering no doubt as things start to open up again, but the stock price remains down. Overall, I feel they have a pretty good grasp on the situation and their properties, but a full recovery will probably take longer than just 2021. One last thing I think is important to look at when considering Federal Realty Trust as an investment prospect is the institutional buying and selling of the stock. From the 13F filing as of June 30th, 2020, we can see that of the top five institutions that are currently holding FRT stock, three of them have increased their stake. Or in the case of Norges Bank, they haven't made any changes to their stake. But Vanguard and JP Morgan have decreased, whereas State Street and BlackRock have increased their positions. Seems mixed to me, so nothing too concerning here. In my opinion, Federal Realty Investment Trust is a solid company. They are a dividend king, so undeniably their growth streak is strong, but not necessarily their growth rate. All in all, their management seems level-headed and consistent in their approach, as they have been for a while now. Still being led by their CEO, Don Wood, who took over that position way back in 2003, the company is not lacking from directional uncertainty, at least from the management side. My biggest concern with the company and investing in the stock is opportunity costs. What I mean by that is that they are positioned to recover, but it is going to take some time. 
I wonder if it's better to explore options such as realty income, ticker symbol O, in which I already have a sizable position, and continue to add to that as opposed to starting a new position in FRT. All in all, the company is not going to stop paying their dividend anytime soon. They have a good sense of direction going forward to recover from the 2020 virus and have plans for further expansion for their properties. If you're already a shareholder, holding will be best. If you're looking to start a position, now is not a bad time. But keep in mind, growth will quite possibly be slower than elsewhere. That's all I got guys. What do you all think about Federal Realty Investment Trust? Time to buy the dip? Till next time, Stock Ninja out. I am not a financial advisor and this video is for educational purposes only. Please do your own research before buying or selling any stocks seen in this video.